Well, hello, this is Stefan, Hotel Bravo 9 Golf Zulu Echo. Maybe you watched the introduction of this do it yourself uh, home brew uh, 40 meters, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters transceiver. And the idea is that we take a closer look at all the building blocks in uh, future videos. But before we do this, I thought we get a better understanding of uh, what kind of possibilities you have today to build radio receivers. I guess it's all started with this direct conversion receiver here that you see on the, on the left side. Um, it is a very simple approach. The simplest way probably to come up with a receiver is that you take the input signal from the antenna and you mix it together with exactly the same signal. If you have a 3.5 megahertz signal, and you mix it with a 3.5 megahertz signal, sinusoidal signal here. And what you get is you get all the audio information at the output, and you just have to filter away the potential um, high frequencies in the output signal. And that's all it is. So you directly convert a high frequency into uh, audio band low frequency signal. Of course, this is not the best receiver, poor selectivity, you might get some DC offset problems here. But it's uh, something that you see more and more again in the digital world, that the front of the receiver is rather simple. And the sophisticated demodulation is done in software. If you want more selectivity, if you want more rejection of uh, mirrored frequencies, mirrored images, if you want more rejection of all kind of other cross modulation issues and properties, you can go for the superheterodyne approach. The superheterodyne approach is not converting the signal all the way immediately down to the analog frequency range, but they use an intermediate frequency. So you first maybe bandpass your filter, your signal, amplify it with a low noise amplifier and bandpass it again. This is called typically also the image frequency rejection filter. And then you mix it down to an intermediate frequency, whatever you have here. You want to mix down to 9 megahertz, in my case. I have a 9 megahertz intermediate frequency. And so since you have one frequency, and for all bands and all frequencies you're listening to, all the stations, you always come down and mix all these informations down to 9 megahertz. And so you can build one simple filter, which is a very good filter for 9 megahertz. In my case, it's about 2.5 kilohertz wide. It is rather steep, so to get uh, good selectivity. And after this filtering of the signal, you go and maybe amplify it again because you lose some signal here. And then you mix it again and mix the 9 megahertz out of the signal with a second mixer that's in this demodulator. And then you have your audio signal. You can do this, these are two stages now, two filter, two mixers. You can have uh, an, an one intermediate frequency. You see receivers out there with two intermediate frequencies, or maybe even three, to get even better um, image rejection and better performance overall. So, nowadays, the better these uh, ADC converter, this analog, the digital converters get, the faster they get, the more linear they get, the more stable they are, uh, the less errors they produce and generate. Um, the more and more you see that you start sampling your RF signal directly. It is maybe similar to what you see here, direct conversion. It, it's, however, the mixing is, is done then digitally and you just convert RF with an ADC. And you see this um, in flex radio, in 
the IC7300 does it that way, I think. And what you have here at the output of the ADC is a discrete sampled RF signal and anything else after that you do in software. Direct sampling and also more and more you see these IQ demodulation quadrature mixture, mixture approaches. That's the modern stuff. And this is only possible since these AD converters get really fast, since DSPs and ASICs and FPGAs are capable of handling all the extreme data volume that you get here and process it digitally. There are also all kinds of possible approaches. One approach here is you generate an I and a Q signal. This is a local oscillator signal where one signal is 90 degrees shifted from the others. So it's called like, this is maybe a cosine signal and then this is a sine signal. So these two um, 90 degrees shifted local oscillator frequencies are then called in phase and quadrature phase, I and Q. These two paths might go into a demodulator it is demodulating whatever is necessary, AM, SSB, FM, phase modulation. And then this demodulated, in a quadrature mix, a demodulated um, signal, you just analog, digitalize, in an AD, convert it, you digitalize it, and then you do all your calculations needed in a DSP. Another approach would be you keep these two channels separate. You have two AD converters. You have a digital representation of I and a digital representation of Q, and then you do all your uh, calculation. Your output, the output here is then a representative of I and Q as a function of uh, samples and time. Or, even better, <laughs> even simpler, but uh, technically more sophisticated, you just sample with an AD converter your uh, RF signal. But that, of course, if you have a 16-bit resolution sample at 250 megahertz, you're getting very, very high data rates, up to 10 gigabit per second that you have to handle and process, and do some arithmetics on it. So um, yeah, maybe something like that would be um, uh, another project then. Well, this is how it all started. Um, I got this experimental kit from my parents in 76. And um, I was building all kind of electronic uh, experiments. And one of them was building your own VHF receiver. I was using this receiver to receive uh, Airbrain, air traffic controller and the air pilot uh, communication, which is uh, actually very, very funny because my, I had two friends then. And one friend became uh, air traffic controller and the other friend uh, became a pilot and I became a double E and electric engineer and so um, <clears throat> it is experimental kit left an impact on our, on our lives um, the receiver itself was a super regenerative re receiver and you see the tuning part you tune to your 118 or whatever megahertz and um, you have a chopper frequency of 50 to 100 kilohertz to chop the um, RF on and off and have even a positive feedback. And this is uh, generating, demodulating the VHF uh, signal AM and FM. And then you just filter the high frequency out of the signal and then you, um, you go through an amplifier. It was, uh, of course, very noisy, a very noisy thing. It is even radi radiating high frequencies. So when I was using these radios, my parents couldn't listen to their radio anymore. Okay, that's a short episode of how I got into that. This is my do-it-yourself super heft transceiver. And this is how I did build it. I come in from the antenna in an RF amplifier. I have a bandpass filter. And I go into a first mixer, just mixing it uh, to 9 megahertz, go through the crystal filter, 
get the nine megahertz out of the signal and demodulate it and have an audio amplifier and get uh, get a loudspeaker. And transmitting is a microphone amplifier, the first mixer up to nine megahertz through the filter and mix it up to the HF frequency I want to transmit with. Go to a preamplifier, amplifier, and then a low pass filter to get out the harmonics and out the antenna. And that's how it looks like. And we go through all these uh, building blocks. Uh, I'm going to make a, a separate blog, a separate video about it. We certainly start out with the antenna amplifier. Then we go through the bandpass filter and the low pass filter. The bandpass at the input, the low pass at the output. Then we have the, the mixers. You see two mixers here. And then there's a third mixer. And the third mixer is mixing down the signal, the intermediate frequency, down to 300 kilohertz. And then I sample it with the AD converter and make a fast Fourier transformation on this uh, intermediate frequency so we can see the spectrum of, uh, of the receiving signal uh, from uh, roughly, I think, plus minus 50 kilohertz from uh, the center frequency. Okay, and then after this uh, mixing of the signal, we go through the crystal filter, crystal ladder filter, and the audio amplifier from the audio amplifier to the loudspeaker. And transmitting means we have a microphone amplifier with a two-tone generator. This two-tone is, is a Wienbridge generator with two frequencies that are not a multiple of themselves. Um, so I have a, a nice beating frequency and um, the, for test purposes of the power amplifier. The power amplifier has a pre-amplification stage and then the output amplifier is a MOSFET driven amplifier with a, roughly about 80 watts on 80 meter, about 40, 50 watts on 40 meters and maybe 20, 30 watts on 20 meters. Okay, and then uh, we can take a look at the the graphical interface, that's a touch display. I programmed it with touch GFX. It's a solution from SD Microelectronics. And we can look at that a little more into detail and also the FFT transformation and how you do this in the microcontroller. Might be of interest from you guys. All right, so let's start then with the antenna amplifier.